Welcome to the Life Given Podcast, uh, your Friday end of week edition. This has been a crazy week and really without further ado, we're going to jump into the show here today. We've got um, multiple things I would love to get to today if we have the time and uh, those three are uh, the NFL started back up and uh, yes, it's sports, but there's some stuff that I would like to unpack from that. Uh, the uh, Grace Community Church, John MacArthur's church out in California received a restraining order. And then finally, President Donald Trump was awarded the Nobel P Peace Prize and people are up in arms over it on both sides of the political aisle. So we've got plenty to get to today. Um, but uh, before we really jump into the uh, meat of the show, I do want to mention a couple things. Today, we aren't going to have video. So if you're, if you're a podcast listener on Apple Podcasts, which by the way is a new addition to our platforms, if you listen on Podchaser, Podpoint, um, Google Podcasts, Spotify, this isn't going to be any different. But for those of you who rely on Facebook Watch or YouTube, this it's going to look a little different. You may just see an image up there um, where where normally there's a video of me talking and maybe a, a breakdown of stuff. Um, but this week, I, I didn't think that was necessary, and I just want to try it out. This would be our first time returning to this format since starting uh, uploading to YouTube. So um, just trying something new right? Just trying to see what is good, what's better. I'm um, just continually experimenting. On that front, uh, last season, as most of you are aware, this is our second season. Uh, this is the 27th episode to the Life Given podcast in the second season, which matches our total of last season's number of episodes. So we ended season one with 27 episodes that's a reasonably good season i think for six months for a six month season we are already at our 27th episode in season two so um just thank you so much for sticking along for the ride we're not even halfway through the season we've already covered lots of ground um we've already broken multiple records personally for this podcast so uh just the amount of listening i mean it seems that 50 of you are tuning in weekly um or episodely <laughs> per episode and i really appreciate that um and really that that will help make the decision like I, i've told you and i've been up front with you guys um we're doing this all the way through until christmas and we'll evaluate then and i would love to continue doing it into 2021 hopefully with some, uh, with a better year, uh, 2020 has, has been many things, but it has not had a lack of content for me to discuss with you. So, um, do, do just keep sharing the show, uh, keep liking and commenting, subscribing on whatever platforms we've gotten a couple more subscribers in the last couple weeks. Um, and all of those are, uh, just so incredibly grateful for Anyway, so let's actually get to the show. I, I sometimes get off on tangents, but really and truly, I am very thankful for uh, what you guys have um, um, just done uh, for me and for the show. Uh, it's been very, very helpful. So let's actually start with uh, President Trump being nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize Award. A lot of people got in a tizzy over this. Um, and I, I don't know really for what specific cause, except for maybe they just dislike Trump. Um, and that that is very possible. Um, now, you know, good for President Trump. That's great. I don't really want to get into it um, on whether I think it's like, I don't want to just dwell on, oh, it's so awesome that he was nominated. But rather, just to clear the air, he was nominated for a specific reason. Now, a Norwegian uh, politician who sits in their, um, I believe it's their parliament. Yes, uh, he's a four-term member of the Norwegian parliament, nominated President Trump because of his work that he did in negotiating the peace agreement between Israel and uh, UAE, the uh, United Arab Emirates. And this, this 
this peace deal, this peace offering basically has the opportunity to bring peace and to bring um, some uh, just a lot of awesome things to the Middle East, which has been war torn for decades. I mean, you know, the, I mean, for centuries, I mean, that. Uh, there's been a long-standing traditions in the Middle East that people just don't like each other on whatever side of the fence. And uh, the um, uh, people mainly involved in creating this deal thanked President Trump for his participation in helping lead the negotiations in the peace, peace treaty. Uh, and, and with the United Arab Emirates and Israel coming to peace, that uh, there's speculation that more countries in that area will be happy to sign on for that piece. So how can this not be a good thing? And for those of you who don't know, the Nobel Peace Prize, and this is the definition for it, um, uh, is an award that is uh, given to someone who has done the most or the best work for fraternity, for for fraternity between nations, for the abolition or reduction of standing armies, and for the holding and promotion of peace con congresses. That sounds a lot like what President Trump just helped do, just helped create. So you, you probably have seen a lot of headlines circulating out there talking about how President Trump is not deserving of this. It seems to match the definition for me. Um, let me know what you think. Reach out to me at the live given and received at gmail.com. Or just if you see me on the street, stop and talk with me. I've had um, more and more people as they see uh, or uh, hear or listen to the podcast or read what we're doing on the news site. More and more people are starting to stop me on the street and talk to me. And that's awesome. I get really excited to talk with you guys um, about current events because it's not like I'm, I'm a master at this, but really it. It's something I love talking about and love learning more about. So you might be in a field that I may not be as knowledgeable or comfortable in. And so I, I will happily just listen to you if you just want to have a sounding board. So uh, Grace Community Church recently just got hit with a um, restraining order, a temporary restraining order, according to patch.com. And the judge in that area, um, as I've read, uh, I think last night, as of, basically as of yesterday, issued a uh, restraining order saying that um, the church's services is an immediate threat to public health and safety due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, uh, Grace Community Church has, um, you know, kind of like, you know, I, I don't want to get into crassness, but kind of, you know, just kind of like, um, just basically, yeah, you know, we basically just told them, you know, we're just going to ignore your ruling. We're just going to ignore uh, all the uh, pressure that's been put on uh, us from the courts there in California. I've been kind of monitoring the situation from afar. It sounds like they were issued a fine. I doubt that they paid it. I hope they didn't pay it. Um, it was just a thousand dollar fine for a church that, you know, it seems like as many as 7,000 people have attended. Um, I, I don't think that would be the biggest thing in the world for them to pay that off. But if you pay that off, you're acknowledging the authority that the courts are assuming over you in that case, even if they don't deserve the authority. And that's my issue here. Once again, we just see the government trying to uh, overbear, overstep, thinking that uh, the coronavirus is uh, allows them to establish the precedent of have, assuming authority over God's church. I think that uh, Pastor MacArthur is doing a good thing uh, in continuing to gather with his people. And I hope and pray that they continue to do that. I just wanted to give you a brief update on where this was because after, you know, three or four weeks ago, uh, we hadn't really heard much. You know, I mean, the 24 hour news cycle goes so quickly that. Uh, we, we don't really cover, we don't return to a topic to see how it's percolating. And this one has percolated. And believe, believe you me, there's probably a lot of pressure and a lot of stress for this church, but uh, just pray that they will exercise wisdom and courage in this time. Moving on to our final topic, I would like to discuss briefly boycotting the NFL. 
uh, because this has been something that I've seen gain more and more traction throughout the years, especially recently with uh, all the social justice movements happening out there in the last uh, eight or nine months. The NFL has not been an exception to the rule that is all professional sports pandering to SJWs. And my Chiefs played last night. I got to tell you, I was excited. I was pumped. I'm, I'm not really one uh, that uh, will boycott the NFL. Um, you know, I, they're pretty in your face about it, but once they get down to playing the game, it's still the game. And I think there's still good things to be drawn from that. Um, so weighing that with all of the crap they might throw at you at halftime or at uh, pregame, I'll just turn it off. Um, and I think I listened to Steve Dace's show yesterday or a couple of days ago, and they, they mentioned that really it comes down to a um, really a state of conscious. Uh, if you're being, uh, if you feel guilty about it, then don't, then don't. Um, so that, that's my, uh, I, I think that's my stance that I've taken on it. Um, and it, you know, if you feel guilty about watching the NFL, knowing what they're preaching at you, then turn it off. Right. But for me, um, you know, we, we, we'll watch movies, we'll watch TV shows and we'll fast forward some scenes or we'll, uh, just turn off the television if uh, they get too preachy or if something uh, something happens that we don't really want our eyes to see. But if the story is still there, we'll turn it back on. Um, and if we enjoy the story enough, we'll continue to watch. And so the NFL is not an exception to that for me. Um, and also my Chiefs were playing the Texans last night, which uh, I'm waking up to a victory Friday, a red Friday. Uh, and we, we stomped them. It wasn't even close. Uh, so that, that was very enjoyable. But um, the thing that I do want to discuss briefly or just ask a couple questions is what kind of social impact do you think that uh, these athletes can have? Uh, these athletes have been touted as role models for better or for worse in our culture. And how beneficial do you think that is uh, for our kids growing up for us growing up as kids I know that I watched um, star athletes uh, and thought that they were really cool right um, but I didn't necessarily model my life after them maybe I would pick up their work ethic maybe I hope to pick up their work ethic um, but you know raised in the home that I was raised in I my role models were my father were my mother were uh, the people we study in scriptures, the people we study throughout history that were godly men and women. And those are the people that had more impact on me. The people that had more impact on me were the people that I saw and lived around every day. My pastor, my uh, friends, my friends' parents, you know, my teachers. The, those were the people that had more impact on me. But, you know, the, these... <laughs> these... Uh, We've got a motorcycle going by. These athletes do wield quite a bit of social power and social influence. And is that something that as Christians, we need to take into account when it comes to the culture wars? Um, I don't think that we can just write it off, but let me know, reach out to me and uh, tell me what you think. I would be interested to see what the impact of this year will be because almost unilaterally throughout the board, Throughout every sport, everyone's voicing their support of Black Lives Matter. And that's a lot of wealthy individuals, influential individuals voicing an opinion that really is contrary to scriptures and the beliefs of the Christian faith. Once again, I'll qualify that with saying not just Black Lives Matter, right? Like, obviously, Black Lives do matter. Um, but they are voicing their support of a movement that is completely anti-Christian, the actual movement itself. Reach out. Let me know what you think. Uh, that, that concludes today's show. Uh, as you head into the weekend, I hope you are able to make time for current events. And if you can't, um, listen and tune in on uh, Wednesdays and Fridays. I think that's kind of our temporary schedule we have right now as, we can, as I just kind of figure out what works. Uh, and fits with my schedule, but at least every Friday, uh, hopefully every Wednesday as well. Um, but I'll keep you guys in the loop. 
and uh, you can find me on parlor at TLG podcast at Instagram at, at underscore TLG podcast underscore on the life given news. Um, you, the podcast is now on a variety of platforms and I'm very excited to be on those. Uh, so do reach out and let me know what you all think. In conclusion, remember that the life that you have been given and the life that you have received includes every area of life. Why should current events be the exception? God bless.